It's always fun trying to imagine the future of human civilization, especially in the modern era where the rate of technological development has increased exponentially. And trying to imagine and predict the future is hardly a new development. There are images out there drawn decades or even centuries ago trying to imagine what life would be like in the time we're living in now. It's no surprise that usually these predictions are way off. It was never very likely that people from the 19th century could predict the year 2000 with any degree of accuracy. Sometimes they get pretty close though, imagining a futuristic device to solve some everyday problem, even if they didn't get the details completely accurate. In other cases though, you have to wonder what the artist was thinking. Even by 19th century standards, some of these ideas are so bizarre and otherworldly that surely nobody took this seriously. I get the feeling for some of these, this wasn't a genuine attempt to predict the future, but rather just someone having a bit of fun. What's weird though, is when we look into the alternate worlds depicting what we might consider the future, devices and technologies just as crazy and bizarre have not only been invented, but adopted into widespread use. You have to wonder why everyone is using something so obviously impractical. There are plenty of examples of these, but the most widespread seems to be holographic displays. Now don't get me wrong, there are plenty of cases in which being able to visualize data in three dimensions would be incredibly useful. What I'm instead referring to are the instances in which holographic displays seem to have replaced computer monitors or television screens or even cell phones. Your data no longer appears on a screen, but rather just projects itself into open space. Someone from our time, predicting that these holographic displays would be in widespread use in the 23rd or 24th centuries, comes across a lot like the artist in the 1900s who thought in the year 2000 we'd all be sailing around on a whale bus. The deficiencies in the design should be just as obvious. Being able to partially see through a display is not an improvement, it's just going to ruin the visual fidelity of whatever it is you're looking at. Who has ever looked at their phone or computer display and said to themselves, I really wish I could see through this and have my background be just a blurry mess? The only situation in which I could see this being practical is if you found yourself in a completely dark room. In daylight or any kind of complex environment, it's probably going to be very difficult to make out whatever it is is on your screen. The other major issue it seems to me is that there's no kind of physical or tactile feedback for when you've pushed a button or interacted with the device. If a holographic button pops up, there's no way to feel if you've pressed it. At least I wouldn't think so, depending on the technology. Again, how is this an improvement? What problem is it trying to fix? But these displays become even more impractical when they can only be interacted with by waving your arms around in 3D space. Again, there are some situations in which this might make sense, but if I'm just reading my email or catching up on TV, the frantic physical gestures needed to do ultimately simple things are just going to wear me out faster than is necessary. The idea that displays like these are used as the controls for spacecraft seems insane to me. Without any tactile or physical feedback, how can a pilot make the precise movements that might be necessary? And how long can they keep this up before they just wear themselves out? These displays seem so much more susceptible to accidentally pressing the wrong button or having some sort of interference in what you're trying to accomplish. And at the risk of going off on a bit of a tangent here, the inefficiency of these displays is compounded by the fact that the user interface seems to be just a labyrinth of tiny elements constantly moving or updating at such a speed that makes it impossible to discern what's actually being displayed. So much of the time, these displays don't seem like a genuine attempt to convey information, but rather just a mishmash of conflicting visual elements without any cohesive design language and some lens flares and glowing effects thrown in for good measure. I doubt I'd find this so annoying if the impractical elements in these designs weren't so obvious, but chances are everyone watching this video has used a display on a phone, tablet, or TV and everything wrong with these holographic displays should be obvious. We don't need to live 300 years in the future to figure out why this would be a bad idea. We know it right now. But that, of course, is just my opinion. And even though I refuse to believe anyone can think any differently from me on this, it's so clear-cut, I'd like to hear your thoughts.
Do you like holographic displays? Can you see their benefits? Are you watching this video in the future on a see-through phone hologram thing while taking your whale bus to work? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this has been a Templin Dispatch.